You are watching the Canadian Public. Hello, I'm François Caron and welcome to my dining room table. In this episode, I'll be reviewing the Fujitsu Lifebook U8110 UMPC or Ultra Mobile PC. The Fujitsu U810 is part of a family of personal computers which are easily recognized by their incredibly small size. The Fujitsu U810 includes both a compact keyboard and a touchscreen, making it one of the smallest, if not the only tablet PC-style UMPC currently available on the market. When opening the box containing your new computer, we find inside the Fujitsu U810 with the extended battery pre-installed, the getting started manual and the international warranty, a system restore disk and driver disk for both Windows XP and Vista, a copy of Microsoft Works 8.5 along with a trial edition of Microsoft Office, the power adapter, a dongle sporting VGA and RJ45 connections for an external monitor and wired network, and one replacement glide stick cap. The Fujitsu U810 is equipped with an Intel A110 processor running at 800MHz, 1GB of non-upgradable dual-channel DDR2 memory running at 400MHz, a 40GB 1.8-inch 4200rpm hard drive, an incredibly bright 5.6-inch LCD touchscreen display with 24-bit color and a resolution of 1024 by 600 pixels, Bluetooth and 802.11 ABG Wi-Fi support, and 24-bit audio support. Around the screen, we have a telescopic stylus for the touchscreen, a 0.3 megapixel webcam, a microphone, a fingerprint reader, a control and delete button, the screen rotation button, and two user programmable buttons. At the base of the unit, we have the mouse buttons, a tiny speaker, three more programmable buttons, and the glide stick. We also have status lights for the keyboard, along with status lights for the computer itself. When the screen is in tablet mode, the glide stick, mouse buttons, speaker, and all programmable buttons remain accessible. The touchscreen is a passive device requiring only light to moderate pressure for your pen strokes to be recognized. The touchscreen, however, does not include palm rejection technology, making it very easy to accidentally draw unwanted pen strokes with alternate body parts. If you're in a dark environment and you can't see the keyboard, press the first programmable button on the screen and your keyboard will be illuminated by two hidden white LED lights. On the left side of the computer, we have an on-off switch for the radios, a DC in jack, an SD card slot compatible with SDHC memory cards, a volume control with push-button mute, and both microphone and headphone jacks. On the right side, we have the compact flash type 1 and 2 card slot, the power switch, and the USB connector compatible with just about every USB device in existence. At the front of the unit, we have the connector for the dongle, which also serves as a connector for the optional docking station. Underneath the unit, we have holes for ventilation along with the battery release latch. The U810 does have a small fan, which is audible only in quiet environments. Let's take a look inside. We see the Wi-Fi unit, the hard drive with a low insertion force connector, and an empty space reserved for the upcoming mobile broadband module. The Fujitsu U810 is available in your choice of Windows Vista Home Premium, Vista Business, or XP Tablet PC Edition operating systems. You can even install Ubuntu 7.10 Gutsy Gibbon on this unit, but currently the touchscreen doesn't work. The cramped 56-key keyboard contains an ocean of double-backed keys and is inappropriate for touch typists. Two-finger typists, however, will become accustomed to this keyboard in a reasonable amount of time as long as you always remember to press the function key before pressing any of the double-mapped keys, which unfortunately includes the tab and the arrow keys. The keyboard is also missing a number of keys, such as the rightmost control, alt, shift, and windows keys, as well as the home and end keys. If you write documents in languages other than English, the lack of a write alt key means you no longer have access to your accents. To resolve this, use the free Key Tweak keyboard remapping utility to remap the left Windows key as the right alt key. Before using the UA10 for the first time, I strongly recommend you put Vista on a crash diet. That's because by the time you finally log into your session more than two minutes after you've powered up the computer, about three quarters of the memory is already consumed by the operating system, leaving you with only 250 megabytes of memory for your applications. Search the internet for the words Optimize Windows Vista, and you will find many sites which will guide you on how to turn off all the Vista features, services, and utilities which you simply do not need. Once you finish cutting out all the fat, your desktop session will appear in under 1 minute and 20 seconds and your initial memory usage will drop from 750 megabytes to 500 megabytes and less. 
The UA10 has no trouble running productivity and internet applications such as office suites and web browsers. Most of the time, you won't notice any significant difference between applications running on the U810 and applications running on a typical desktop computer. The screen's width of 1024 pixels does ensure that web pages appear properly, but the text can be very difficult to read on such a small screen. Increasing the font size in your browser may not work on certain sites and create drawing problems on other sites. Increasing Vista's font sizes won't help either because all your dialog boxes will also increase in size and potentially exceed the height of the screen, hiding the OK, Cancel and Help buttons. The dongle does include a VGA connector and the UA10 will support external monitor resolutions of up to 1280 by 1024 pixels. So if you do need to use a large monitor from time to time, you're covered. If you're planning to play games on this unit, you will definitely be limited as to what you can play. For example, you can forget about playing most first-person shooters unless you want to play a very old game such as Quake 2 in the tiny 800 by 600 pixel window. Other less resource-intensive games will run properly once you make a few adjustments. For example, Bejeweled 2 must be run in a windowed mode, and SimCity 4 works best under the software renderer. Before you start playing your media files, I suggest you adjust the screen's color temperature in order to remove the huge blue overcast the screen casts over everything. Open the control panel, double-click on the Intel GMA driver for mobile icon, and click on the color correction tab. Select the red radio button, then set the brightness to minus 3 and the contrast to 51. Now select the blue radio button, then set the brightness to minus 6 and the contrast to 44. Click on the scheme option button and save your new color scheme. Apply the changes and notice we no longer have a blue fog cast over everything. Your pictures and videos will no longer be tinted blue, and all of the other colors will become more vibrant. In general, media files not exceeding a resolution of about 850 by 480 pixels should play normally on the UA10, with only the processor-intensive H.264 codec showing visible signs of stuttering whenever fine detail is present in the image. Media files greater than 850 by 480 pixels will also gradually display increasing levels of stuttering the closer they reach the screen's native resolution. The built-in speaker's sound quality is not that dissimilar from the sound of an old AM transistor radio from the late 60s. In other words, it shrieks a bit. If you use quality headphones, however, the UA10's onboard audio device will give you decent sound quality and will reach reasonably loud volume levels. As for the battery life, you can play back a series of reasonably sized media files for up to 4 hours and 20 minutes on a fully charged battery. If your media files reside on a memory card, however, you can extend the playback time an extra 15 minutes. Compact flash and secure digital media cards can be installed flush within the UA10. This means you can carry the UA10 with media cards pre-installed and not worry about them popping out or breaking off. However, even though the UA10 can support the latest generation of rapid high-capacity media cards, apparently there is a size limit of 8GB due to a bug in either the BIOS or the drivers. Fujitsu is aware of the problem and is currently working on a solution. Despite its small size, the Fujitsu Lifebook UA10 is a real computer that will function as designed as long as you understand and accept its limitations. While it's definitely not suitable for processor-intensive tasks and hardcore gaming, it is perfectly suitable for taking notes, updating documents, surfing the internet, do PowerPoint presentations, and watch movies and TV shows during your trips. The computer includes every component you would normally find on a typical tablet PC, albeit in the scaled-down size, but as long as you can live with the underpowered processor, cramped keyboard, tiny screen, and severely limited upgrade options, the Fujitsu Lifebook UA10 could become a useful accessory for the business traveler who's fed up carrying around a 5-pound weight. And with street prices hovering around $950 for the Vista Home Premium model, it's one of the more affordable UMPCs currently available on the market. That's it for the Fujitsu Lifebook U810 UMPC. I'm Francois Caron. Thank you for watching.